Well, today we continue our focus on reviewing the Oshun governorship elections, and we're joined now by Mr. Femi Fanikayo, a former Minister of Evasion and a member of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you for coming on this morning. morning thanks. Uh, earlier in, in uh, one of our reports, um, you had said yes, it was a, you had a good campaign. Uh, you congratulated the winner, but ever since then, uh, so many other things have been said. I mean, we read different headlines. We've seen that of the DSS. We read, uh, even yesterday, people spoke about the role of security, militarization. Has your views changed ever since that time? Well, I, I, I haven't um, had the opportunity. I've just, just got to your studio to read the papers this morning, apart from the headlines that I saw in this program. Um, I really wouldn't know what they've said. Um, but of course, anybody's free to say anything they want to say. For me, uh, I was there, I participated, I um, supported and campaigned for our candidate, and I was actively involved for almost uh, uh, 14, 15 days uh, prior to the election, and I was there throughout, uh, and we worked extremely hard, and uh, I saw what was on the ground, and I believe that it was an election that was credible, uh, it was a hard-fought election, and there has to be a winner and a loser in every situation. Um, unfortunately for us, uh, this time round, our side appeared to have lost or lost, and uh, although I'm aware of the fact that um, there are issues that are now being raised about that, um, and of course it's right and proper for anybody that feels that things may not have been done in the right way for them to raise these issues, it's a constitutional right. It's Yolo Mishuri's constitutional right and prerogative to raise issues concerning the election. Um, but from what I am aware of, from what I saw, and from what I know, I believe that um, this was an expression of the will of the people um, and subject to whatever may, 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 may come up in court or whatever, um, I feel that you know, we should get to a point where we can congratulate those that, that won an election and, 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 and not feel as if we've lost. I mean, I don't think anybody has lost here. I think that the Nigerian people and the people of Oshu State have won because we've had an election where nobody was killed, nobody was injured, nobody was maimed, and I'm not aware of any serious claims of rigging. Well, you know, you, you also said uh, at that time that uh, in, you polled, yes, you polled over 290,000 votes yeah. in those local governments. And have you heard people say, wow, so how did you do that? Because does that mean that if you had maybe gotten more votes in some other elections, yes, you have gotten more than that. But people have said, look, is it actually possible to have polled those amounts of votes in those few local governments? No, no. You see, people don't seem to get it very clear. Look, yes. There are some local governments of the PDP won, fewer than the APC. However, in all the uh, local government areas that APC won, the PDP got a relatively high figure. So you, put, you, know, you add all the figures together. It's not a question of just the votes where we won. We won uh, in, I think, about six or seven local government areas. But the fact remains that throughout the whole state, in all the local government areas in the state, we had substantial support. And, you know, the figure that you mentioned, 292,000 or thereabouts, represents almost 42% of the votes cast in the election, which tells you one thing, and that thing is simple and clear, that no party, the APC or anybody else in the Southwest, can lay claim to being the party of the Yoruba people. I mean, the Yoruba people have, at least in Oshu State, have spoken clearly that, look, it's more or less split, more or less just 50-50, just, you know, a little bit under for us, a little bit over for them. And um, I think that's a very positive thing. So the support is widespread. Um, where we failed, I am fully aware, because I, I, I did a study on it and um, a, short, a short analysis, which uh, me and my people did after the, 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 the election. And um, I, I, I have a clear picture about where we didn't do so well. And I think places like Ede, um, places like Elisha, and particularly um, Ushobo itself, where the person that won got almost 40,000 votes. I think I'm right in saying that. Now, you can, you can tell he got 40,000 votes in Oshobo alone. And uh, that represents almost 50% or almost 50% of what he beat us by, which tells you one thing, that this was actually a very close election. It was a good election. There may have been irregularities here that we have made claims as well. For example, in Ede, some of our um, uh, returning officers were not allowed uh, to stay there according to what they told us when they came back to party headquarters and that would be looked into uh, but for me by and large they say who didn't allow them they they, they claim they may claim that INEC, the INEC officials did not allow them um to 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 do their job as returning officers they they lay claim to the fact that um they were asked for invitation uh, for letters representation letters and things like that and 
when they didn't uh, produce the letters from the parties, they were not allowed to remain um, at the polling units. Now, that's a claim. That's an allegation. It needs to be substantiated. It needs to, and you know, I, I wasn't there, but of course, these are our party people that have said this, and I take that very, very seriously. But having said that, for me, by and large, this was a good election. It was a credible election. There has to be a winner. There has to be a loser. I'm glad at the fact that it wasn't just me that congratulated uh, Ogweni Arigwechala. The president did the same thing. The party chairman did the same thing. Uh, a number of others uh, did the same thing. PDP ministers like uh, Musili or Banikuru, my good friend, did the same thing. And um, I think that's the way to go in such matters. However, having said that, I, I should add, if there are issues that the state PDP have seen that none of us have seen or are aware of, which you know, compels them or makes them feel that they need to go to court on the issue, it's their right and their prerogative. If Arabia Shola hadn't gone to court uh, over the 2007 election and remained in court for three and a half years, he wouldn't have been governor today. So I wouldn't take, I wouldn't want to say for one minute that Omi Shore or anybody else of the party leadership in Oshu State does not have the right to go to court. You, you, um, I was going to ask you about the INEC officials requesting for those documents from yeah. your party officials. That was INEC doing their job, right? Well, I'm not sure whether um, part of INEC's job is to ask for a letter of representation from a polling agent. I'm not sure. Uh, according to our people, uh, that is not a requirement, and that was where there was a dispute. Um, but then, you know, th these things have to be looked into. The veracity of these claims uh, are subject to a lot of inv investigation, and I would not uh, be the one to tell you whether they were right or wrong. All I know is that coming from our party leaders and our party polling agents, I personally take them very seriously, and I think they ought to be looked into. Okay. The other issue that a lot of people have talked about was the presence of um, security, no, security personnel. Agents, yes. They said, they, okay, the word, the Oshun State was militarized. Mm. Is that what it should be? Well, I, you know, I have a fundamental um, di you know, disagreement with those that, that, that have that view. Of course, they're entitled to their opinion. Um, but I look at it from a completely different perspective. Uh, for me, um, I really don't see a, a problem in the situation whereby you feel that there may be trouble uh, in an election, that the government would now flood the place with security officials. I think it's important to create an atmosphere for people to be able to come out and vote freely without any fear of intimidation or violence from the other side. But uh, the, the background to, 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 this, um, to this very peculiar type of um, exercise, because it is peculiar, uh, is the fact that in previous elections in our country over the years, you've had massive violence, killings, abductions, burning of houses, and so on and so forth. And the overwhelming majority of people, that uh, voters, refuse to come out to vote simply because they feel that, look, if we do so, uh, we may end up being killed, or we may end up being brutalized at the polling booth, or so on and so forth. Well, I think the reason why the government took this position was that, listen, everybody, whether you're young or old, uh, a woman or a man, has the right to go and vote freely and fairly without any form of intimidation. And the security agents were there to ensure that. That is my understanding of it. And I might add that this was done in other states before. This was not just done in Osho State. It was done in Ikiti State. Previous to that, I'm told that it was done in Edo State. Previous to that, it was done in Anambra. And previous to that, it was done in, in other places where PDP lost. So in these other places you mentioned, were there incidents of, as some people claim to assume that, there were incidents of sporadic shooting in the air and then arrest of opposition party officials. Were there incidents like that? Well, I, I, I am not sure. P you probably have to put that question to the security agents themselves, whether they, 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 they felt the need to arrest anybody. And when they do arrest people, I'm sure that they must have their reasons for doing so. That question is best put to them. Um, what I would tell you is this, that you know, being on the other side, that is the PDP, I, I can assure you, I can, I can tell you clearly that many of our supporters and followers in the state we're living in trepidation and fear of reprisals for supporting Iyola Mishuri. A lot of them were very nervous about coming out to vote because going by history uh, and going by the kind of propaganda that was being churned out by the APC at the state level, uh, they felt intimidated and they felt very comfortable at the fact that the security agents were there. Plus the fact that if you remember, um, the whole of the national leadership of the uh, APC was, um, was asked to come to Oshubu uh, their whole national executive camped in Oshubu. A lot of people came in from Lagos State. The allegation, and again, I wasn't there to verify, the, but the very serious allegation was that many, many people were being drafted in thugs and so on and so forth, from Lagos State particularly. Um, uh, money was being carted across state borders and so on. These are the allegations that were being made. And my, my understanding is the security agents were there to ensure that if this was going on, such people, these... 
this army that was drafted in, allegedly so, was not allowed to inflict any violence on our people, uh, and also to keep the various factions, if you like, apart. And I think that's important. Now, if you allege that this was done for some sinister motive, then surely they could have done a lot better to ensure that the PDP won. This, this was not the case. What happened was that they created a, a, an atmosphere where a free and fair election could be fought, and where the people could express their will without any kind of interference from people on the other side, as it were. So I think the police, the security agencies, you know, if anything, all of us uh, felt a little bit uncomfortable with seeing such things around. But it was for the good and not for the As regards arrests and so on and so forth, um, those that were arrested, you need to ask the security agencies why they arrested them. But I am firmly of the view that the security agencies were doing their job simply because they needed to ensure that nobody, particularly those from outside the state, did not come in to come and create mischief. You know, some would argue that people like Obani Kuru were, was in Osho State campaigning. Well, he was there, so was the president, so was the VP, and so many other people within our party. But they were there, but they left uh, prior to the election, a couple of days before. They left Osho State. On the other side, their national executive members, their key figures, their godfathers, the owners of their party, remained throughout the election. And um, a lot of their party supporters were also in the state. So I think that's what the security agencies were trying to do, to ensure a free and fair election and level playing field.